All right, hi all, this is Mr. Yeager. Uh, we are now looking at basically uh, vector math is this, is this lesson for, again, AP Physics. We are continuing in Unit 1 still. Uh, this is basically the introduction to two-dimensional motion. Um, and if we're looking at it from regular physics, you are in Unit 3 now um, as we introduce two-dimensional motion. Okay, so here we go. So, vectors is essentially basic trigonometry, okay? You need to be able to find the sides of a right triangle, a nice right triangle, and then you'll have to also be able to find the angles of a right triangle, obviously the two others other than 90, all right? But, so, it's basic trigonometry. We don't do crazy obtuse triangles or acute triangles or any acute, all that stuff, okay? Um, we, it is very much just a... Um, right triangle Pythagorean theorem Sokotoa method here. So that's where we're going to run through some of this fairly briefly, um, but at the same time making sure you understand everything. Okay. So again, we're going to be using right triangles uh, in both AP and regular physics. We, even in AP we don't do anything more than just simple trig. That's at the beginning of the year I mentioned. You need to just know how to do basic trig with Pythagorean theorem and Sokotoa. So we know Pythagorean theorem is hypotenuse squared equals opposite squared plus adjacent squared, okay? Or side squared plus side squared. So just be good with that formula. Nothing too special there. Okay? For trigonometry, you got to know your Sokotoa, okay? And I don't mind people sitting there going Sokotoa with the Sokotoa. So opposite over hypotenuse, okay? Co or ka, ka. It would be cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent, toa. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, okay? So we need to obviously be able to handle all of these. We use degrees, okay, not radians. That'll be one thing, especially for AP students that are taking calculus at the same time. We, we stay in degrees. We don't look at this from a radian perspective at all, okay? So degrees, degrees, degrees. We'll have to remember to say that all the time when we start our test. Be in degrees, okay? Uh, if we also have to obviously be able to do the inverse functions. I mean, really, you just have to be able to plug this in in your calculator. Okay, you have to know inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent. Okay, that'll give you the angle that you're looking for. So the prior one will help you solve for a particular side if you have the angle. And obviously, if you don't, you can use uh, the inverse sine, inverse function to help you figure out the other. Again, for any triangle problem, you only need two pieces of information. Okay, um, you only need to basically know, you have, basically have two things. You either need to know two sides and then you can solve for everything, or two, need to know the angle and a side, okay? Once you have either uh, both of those things, okay, either two sides or an angle on the side, you can go ahead and solve, okay? So, getting into the vectors part of it, you will hear this plenty. Uh, there are two terms. We call them a component vector and a resultant vector. And you can see the, the picture down below there. Component vectors are the two perpendicular sides, okay? The two that are connected with a right triangle, okay? Or sorry, right angle. Uh, the components are the two sides, not the hypotenuse. The resultant will always be the uh, hypotenuse. And we call it a resultant because the resultant is the combination of the two component vectors, okay? A squared plus B squared equals C squared is the combination of the two. That is the resultant. Okay? So the resultant will pretty much all, it will usually be an angled value. Okay? It will be something that's off going at an angle. It doesn't have to be. It does not have to be. But it's a combination of the vectors involved. Okay? Let me make this really clear. Let's say, for instance, usually, 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 let's start off with the usual example. You'll have a resultant vector that's off at an angle, okay? And so this will be create. this is created by the two component vectors, the one that goes horizontal and the one that goes vertical. So this is the horizontal component, this is the vertical component. You can see I use CX and CY for horizontal and vertical, all right? So that resultant is a combination of those two through the Pythagorean theorem. You could possibly get a problem where the resultant is completely horizontal. This could be a resultant vector. Well, what is that then made up of? That is only made up of a horizontal component. The 
vertical component we would say then is zero. There is no vertical component based on that resultant. And then we can do vice versa. We can make it completely vertical. So usually we will split these up, but again, be used to these terms. Resultant, the hypotenuse, the angled one, versus the component, which is always going to be x and y, always perpendicular to each other. All right. The component vectors, oh, here we go. Don't always have to be perpendicular. I should have just waited. All right. If you have two horizontal component vectors, they simply get added together. And you can see we have the resultant, the longer resultant. If they are in opposite directions to each other, we subtract them. Okay, you can see the resultant is smaller than basically either vector that I have here. The component vector to the right is larger than the component vector to the left. So if I add those two together, I'm left with a horizontal resultant vector, a smaller horizontal resultant vector. This will come into play quite a bit when we get to forces, okay? Where we will say you have a 10 newton force to the right, we have a 5 newton force to the left. What would be the overall force that this object feels? That would be the resultant force, 5 newtons to the right. All right, so we have these two people pushing on it. It's not going to accelerate at 10 newtons. It'll accelerate only at 5 newtons because there's something pushing back 5 newtons. Okay? So that is, again, resultant and components. If you have two that are in one direction, you simply add them together. These could be up, up. It could be up, down. We would subtract them. If they're at right angles, perpendicular to each other, we, find, we use Pythagorean theorem to figure out the resultant. All right? I'm going to say one more thing, even if it comes up later. As you saw on the prior page, when I drew, uh, when we have the resultant, okay, we always connect vectors head to tail. Okay, the head is where the arrow is. The tail is obviously the bottom. This would be the tail. Okay. So these are my two components, and then the resultant always starts from where you begin at the very bottom, at the tail, and goes up to the final head. Okay, that would be your resultant. Okay. Again, we are primarily look at the objects um, in two-dimensional motion, so it won't be the two horizontals added together. We will look in from it going at an angle. All right. So again, any measurement we have done so far is related to a vector quantity. So why are we doing this? It's because we can say these arrows represent displacement, velocity, or acceleration. It doesn't matter. It's, when we're talking about vector addition, we're talking about vector quantities. So again, well, there's going to be plenty of other vector quantities like force and momentum and um, I mean, just a lot of things, um, even going into rotational components for AP. All right, so here we go, addition of vectors. All right, so let's start with a quick practice problem here. In a daily prowl through the neighborhood, a cat makes a displacement of 120 meters due north, followed by a displacement of 72 meters due west. Find the magnitude and displacement of the cat from home. Okay, so I, it is going in detail here. So again, you read the problem. The idea is this cat goes 120 meters straight north, and then 72 meters due west straight to the west. It makes a left turn and goes uh, west. So draw out the component vectors of the mo cat's motion. Again, like I said, we always draw it head to tail, head to tail, and then the resultant always starts from the very beginning, wherever you started drawing, to the very, very end. So you can see our resultant triangle right down at the bottom here. Okay. What we then do is we go in and calculate the resultants. Okay, look at that. Keep my underlines. Calculate the resultant. So 120 squared plus 72 squared equals r squared. Okay. If I set this up, 120, 72, and this is r squared, resultant squared. Okay. This is a displacement. The answer is going to be 140 meters. 120 squared plus 72 squared, and then take the square root of that, comes out to 140 meters. So what we're saying is the cat has a displacement of 140 meters from its starting position. Now, if I went back to unit one, well, again, AP, we're still at unit one. If I said what distance did we travel, we would add all of these up. 120 plus 72, 192 would be the total distance. This is this, the displacement. 192 would be the distance. All right, so nothing too complicated there. That's the magnitude. That's the magnitude of where I'm going. But now I want to figure out the 
actual direction, the displacement, okay, is what we're saying here. So we said we are, we've gone 140 meters, that's the magnitude of the displacement, but what is the direction? All I do is I just basically do the inverse tangent. I use, I'm looking at the angle from the starting point up to where the resultant is. So that's where I choose my angle, okay, is that particular section. And so if I do this, inverse tangent of 72 over 120, this right here, the cat is headed 31 degrees, 31 degrees. Okay. We would specifically say 31 degrees west of north. West of north. That's how we specifically describe it. Okay. Um, and again, we pretty much always do the same methods through all this. You do the Pythagorean theorem. Technically, we could get the direction right away because we do know both sides. But we then describe it as west of north. I get this because the idea is this is the direction from the starting axis. Okay. Direction from starting axis. The idea is this is the way you're drawing it. You are 31 degrees west of the northern axis. Okay, because again, technically this would be on a big piece of graph paper. We could do that. Okay? So that's why we call it west of north. Alright? So again, draw out the component vectors, calculate the resultant, find the angle using a trig function. I would prefer, you don't have to use tangent. The reason I use inverse tangent is those are the numbers given to you. What if you accidentally make a bad mathematical error with the resultant, and you then you do inverse sine and you use 72 over your answer, you're going to get a wrong angle. So I always do recommend going back and using your original numbers as much as possible. All right. What if I want to what's called resolve a vector? Resolve a vector. This will be a very common phrase. Resolve the vector. All right. What that means is I get a problem. A person walks 100 meters at a 25 degree angle with the horizontal northeast. Okay. What are the component vectors? So I'm drawing it north of east is my resultant. I make sure I read it. That I'm, Am I coming from the horizontal axis or the vertical axis? I'm coming up from the 25 degrees north of east of the vertical or horizontal axis. When I say resolve a vector, what we're trying to do is we're trying to break up this resultant uh, vector into its two parts using the side and the angle. Okay? This is going to be the most common process. When you start doing projectiles, we do a lot of problems where the object is shot off at a 25 degree angle at 100 meters per second. You're given the angle velocity. Well, you're going to see in all the calculations we're about to do, we want to change that angle velocity into horizontal and vertical components. And that's what we're doing here. So we first off by drawing it. Okay, draw out those two component vectors. Okay, starting from the beginning, draw east and then north. Okay, never go backwards. Always draw from the tail up to the head. Okay. Then we use some trig to find the two sides of the triangle, okay? We have the adjacent side, our dx, and we have our opposite side, the dy. We call it dx because it's horizontal, dy because it's vertical, okay? We will name these things based on whatever we're trying to measure. You will see us use rx and ry. That's what it's saying below. You could say dx, dy, bx, by, uh, ax, ay. It doesn't matter. We use any of those ways to describe the side, the components, okay? We all understand what they mean from that point. But we use some trig to solve, okay? We can see that cosine of 25 would equal to dx over 100, sine of 25 would equal to dy over 100, opposite over hypotenuse. I would strongly recommend immediately being able to see how we just rearrange that. If I'm trying to solve for dx, I'm multiplying that resultant out, okay? It is very common for us to, again, have the resultant. So if you want to be quick, basically what we're saying is d cosine theta of the problem will give me the dx. d sine theta will give me the dy, where d is your resultant. Okay, Your resultant doesn't have a subscript after it at all. all right? This is very common. But don't sit there and go, x is always cosine, y is always sine. The problem could technically make it more, you know, could you could technically have a more difficult problem where you're measuring from the vertical and now your dx would be 
sine dy would be cosine. So you've got to just pay attention to the triangle you're using. I'm not trying to overcomplicate it. You just use cosine and sine. Just obviously figure out which one you're going to be needing for that particular component, x or y. All right. <clears throat> Resolving component vectors. Okay. So this is basically what I'm getting into. Okay. Just be aware, most of the time, okay, we can find each vector by simply multiplying the resultant by the appropriate trig function. Okay? By the appropriate trig. All these are just trying to show you examples. If you have a resultant A, AX would be A cosine theta, AY would be A sine theta. This is all assuming that the resultant is being measured from the horizontal axis. Okay, that's what this is assuming. So be aware, that's what it said. The above work when the angle is from the horizontal. If it's from the vertical, everything gets switched. Everything gets switched. So just be aware of that. This is just trying to speed you up by going, wait, I don't, like, should I sit here and write out sine, oops, did I move forward? No, I did not. Sine angle equals AX over A. Oh, wait, I just multiply the A out. We should start, we should start seeing that more uh, quickly as we keep practicing these problems. Right. So if we do a couple practice problems, resolve the components of a 45 meter per second vector at a 70 degree angle with the horizontal. So let's do this one quickly. Okay. So the 70 degree angle is with the horizontal, so 70 degrees. This is 45 meters per second. Okay. So I draw that out. Sorry, grabbing my calculator. I draw that on out. I draw in my two component vectors, my horizontal components going over and then my vertical components going up. This is a velocity, meters per second, so I'm solving for Vx and Vy. Vx is going to equal the resultant time on the adjacent side, cosine of 70. Vy would be 45 sine of 70. Again, based on the drawing, we should, since it's more vertical than horizontal, my vertical component should be larger. So 45 times 70 cosine. I'm in degrees. This is going 15.4 meters per second horizontally. Vertically, it's going 42.3 meters per second. So there you go. Clearly going faster vertically than horizontally because you're shooting it more straight up. Okay, there we go. Nice. All right. What if a rocket is accelerated 5 meters per second squared west and 10 meters per second squared north? What is the resultant acceleration and angle? So this is just the other type of example. So this one is giving me the vectors 5 meters per second squared, 10 meters per second squared north. Again, technically, we should draw the vectors to scale, but it really doesn't matter too much with it. Okay, technically I should draw that one as longer, the vertical one. All right, the resultant is from the beginning to the very end. So this is my resultant. You can see I have accelerations. This is AY, this is AX. So how would I find my official acceleration? My official acceleration, I'd use Pythagorean theorem. Okay, 5 squared plus 10 squared equals 125, which then I take the square root of. This has an acceleration of 11.2 meters per second squared. What about the angle that I'm going? Well, I got 10 on the opposite side, 5 on the adjacent. This is going to be tangent to the negative 1 of 10 divided by 5. And my angle is 63.4 degrees. So my rocket here is going is accelerating 11.2 meters per second squared at an angle of 63.4 degrees north, we would say, north of west, okay, because I'm on the western axis, angle's going up, okay, Tell the, again, the direction is telling me which way the angle is going from what axis, north of the western axis, and there we go, all right, this is very much related to something called relative motion, okay, relative motion problems, um, <coughs> They're, they're not clear unless you're using the idea of vectors appropriately, basically vector addition. All right, We basically have to define what direction uh, basically the vectors are, and the problem we're about to give is basically a swimmer that's either going to swim with the current or against the current. Okay? 
So you have the swimmer. What we're saying is they can swim at the speed of Vs. They're swimming at the speed Vs towards the. That's how fast they can go. They can either go right or left. In this case, they're moving to the right. All right. What if the water is also moving to the right? Well, what does that mean? That means what will you? Will he be swimming any faster? He won't. He'll still swim the same speed. But if you're outside the water, how fast should you see him? Should he go faster or slower than the speed Vs? Well, if both things are working together, he should clearly be going faster. Okay. His actual, his velocity relative to you on the side will be faster, will be the combination of both those speeds together because you're seeing both things move together with it. Again, relative is related to the idea of frame of reference. It's what do you perceive based on where you are. Okay, if you're in the water with him, you're going to be moving VW. You're gonna, even if you're not swimming, you'll be like it's like when you're in the ocean with an undertow. All right, basically you're going to move along with the water. Okay, so maybe you'd only see him going speed Vs, but outside the water, he's swimming with it, obviously would be going faster. A lot of you guys have probably experienced that before if you've ever swim with a current. You can feel it, but again, you're not necessarily swimming any faster. Okay, you're swimming faster relative to the shore. What if the uh, water's pushing against you? Okay, again, you're still, you're still trying to swim just as fast, but it, based on the shore, you're going to be looking like you're not swimming very quickly. It'll subtract the two of them. You can see I still have plus, but the idea would be the VW maybe is a negative value. Okay, so just subtract it out. All right, so those are pretty straightforward to get. I think most people can understand it. Again, it's relative to the shore, if you have this swimmer, relative to outside the pool. All right, the person inside the pool they really don't feel any change until they look out to the side and go, wow, I'm not moving very quickly. Obviously, they might feel a force, but that's not what we're referring to here. All right. What if the water is Going four miles per hour east, you are capable of paddling. We already got that. You want to paddle straight across the river from the south to the north. At what angle do you aim your boat relative to the shore, and how fast would you now would you move across the river? All right. So the idea is you want to go straight across. So this is the most difficult type of problem. We just say what would be your bearing, okay, that you take. So you have to think the river is going to push you four miles per hour east. So if you want to go straight, which way do you have to aim? You're going to have to aim out to the left. What we're trying to do 
is we have basically our we have our components. Okay, this is five miles per hour going straight, four miles per hour going east. If you tried to paddle straight across, you'd end up down river. Okay, at some speed. I'm just going to write V R. Okay, you you would not be going straight. All I'm doing is I'm shifting this triangle. I'm bending it. I'm turning it sideways to make the resultant look like it's going straight across. I leave every, every other part of the triangle the same. Again, the four mile per hour one looks a little bit longer than it should, okay? But I'm basically leaving everything the same. All I'm doing is you gotta imagine like maybe there's something rotating this. I'm gonna just rotate this triangle where now the hypotenuse is straight up. The one side, the five mile per hour is going up to the left and then you have the current pushing you the rest of the way. So if you go against the current at an angle, you can get straight across the river. That's what I'm trying to show you. Okay? So, how would I solve the problem? Okay? This is the only one you put the paddle, uh, you put the paddling in them perpendicular to each other. So what we're going to get is we can immediately find the speed. I mean, you can do that without even drawing it correctly. 4 squared plus 5 squared equals V squared. You'd be going 6.4 meters per second. Okay? So you actually would make it across a little bit faster. You're actually going across a little bit more quickly because of the combined velocity. How would I get the angle? I would go ahead and do my inverse tangent. Okay, four is the opposite, five is the adjacent, four over five is a 38.7 degree angle. So what does this mean? What does this mean? It means if I travel 38.7 degrees, oh, ah. you're at the end here, west, of north, west of north, okay? This is your northern axis. I'm going west of it, okay? West of north. I should go straight across the river. Somebody staying on the side, they'd be looking at me, like even though you're, you, you're, you might be looking like you're heading off to the side, they'd be seeing you go straight across the river, okay, is what we're looking at there. All right, so that is vector mathematics. Thank you.